How do I calculate the area of an unbounded shape? You probably have never thought about unbounded shapes before, have you? Probably not, you're used to bounded shapes. So let's just say that all the shapes you've looked at before, so like when you think triangle, that's a bounded shape. An unbounded shape is not a triangle. It can have similarities to a triangle, but it's not a triangle. So let's talk about what an unbounded shape is, okay? Here we go. Consider the function y equals one divided by x, okay? You're all considering that function? Are you considering the graph of that function? Yes, graph of that function, we're considering it. Good, good. Oh, there it is. Right there in front of you if you weren't able to consider it, okay? So, yes, that's the one. Okay, consider please the integral from one to five of that function when divided by x along the x-axis dx. So one is like here, five is like there. So this is the shape we're talking about, right? That shape right there goes from one to five. See how the shape is bounded, it's all nice and closed up, yes? Okay, so what would unbound be? Unbound would be a different integral. Let's say I go from negative one to two, same function. What's the area gonna look like for this one? I'll start out the same way. We're gonna go from negative one, which is right about there, to two, which is right about here, along the x-axis, yes? Yes, okay. So we draw down to the shape, curve, and we follow the curve along, and as we get closer and closer to zero, what's happening? It's still going, and going, and going. So this right here, this thing, that's what I mean when I say unbounded. I mean, you've got an open side. I mean, you have space that continues forever. I mean, your shape needs a side down here, but it's never gonna have a side down here. It's not going to happen. It's going to get closer and closer and closer and possibly close. So close that we would say the limit approaching zero from the left is zero, or I'm sorry, the limit approaching zero from the left is negative infinity, but we never close that up. Same thing happens over here. The shape following the graph along goes like this and up the axis like that. And that shape is also unbounded right there. That asymptote and the axis go on and on forever and ever, and they never close up. They never cross, they never touch, they never intersect, they never close the shape. That's what I mean by unbounded. Okie dokie. We're done talking about that guy. Let's talk about a new guy here, okay? Here's the new guy we're gonna look at. And we're gonna use this new guy to understand the relevant calculus. So. Check this out. We are going to look at the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative x plus, or negative x divided by two dx. And I'm gonna tell you right away that it is two, okay? So that has a value of two. Now you may not yet have thought about why that's significant to know that that is two, but let's look graphically at what's going on here. E to the power of negative X divided by two is an exponential function with a negative exponent. So it's like that, right? Something like that. A little bit less steep, but something like that. Yes, that's e to the power of negative x divided by two. Okay, so if we're doing the area from zero to infinity, 
we're talking about this shape. So follow along and then follow along the x-axis forever as well. And follow along this thing forever. And that is unbounded, right? There is no point where e to the power of negative x divided by two is going to close up with the x-axis. They're gonna intersect and close that shape off, right? It goes on forever, yes? And so right now, maybe your brain is starting to short circuit a little bit because you're like unbounded area, infinite, unbounded area, infinite, goes forever and ever. How could something that goes forever and ever be two? Because two is finite, two is a number, I can count to two. Two is not infinity. Two is not even close to infinity. I mean, honestly, two is as close to infinity as a thousand is, but let's pretend for a moment for our little tiny brains that two is far from infinity compared to a thousand, okay? Deal? Deal. So how is it we have an unbounded region, a shape that should have infinite area, right? It doesn't close off, it goes forever, and it actually has a value of two. How is that possible? And the answer, as with most things in life, is math. So I've prepared for you some calculations. I used Wolfram Alpha just to give you a little bit of a different taste from what we normally do. So I had Wolfram Alpha compute, just like it says right here, the integral from zero to 10. That's the same function, e to the power of negative x divided by two. This is equivalent to using your calculator, okay? I just used a different calculator. So that's 1.9865 approximately, okay? All right, so let's make sure we have that down because we're gonna want that, okay? So the integral from zero to 10 of negative x divided by two power of e is about 1.987. Agreed? Okay. So again, imagine what I did with Wolfram Alpha there. It's the same thing you can do on your calculator. You should be able to check that one on your calculator. Your calculator has sufficient computing capacity to do that one. Okay. All right. I also had my super fancy calculator calculate the integral for the same function. So again, this is e to the power of negative x divided by two with respect to x. Now we're going from zero to 100. Check out what it is from zero to 100. It says it is approximately two. What is it exactly equal to? It is exactly equal to two minus two divided by e to the power of 50. That is what that integral is exactly equal to. Have you caught yet what I am doing? Yes. I'm finding areas that are closer and closer to infinity. Okay, it's okay, just laugh at me. I'm not getting any closer to infinity. We all know this, but just let it happen for our little lizard brain parts that need this reassurance of the calculation, okay? So we'll pretend that 100 is a lot closer to infinity than zero, 10 is, okay? We'll pretend that. So let's get even closer to infinity, shall we? Even closer. Tis an impossibility, but let's pretend. Let's go up to 1,500. Man, I, there's a lot of things I'd like to have 1,500 of, okay? Check out what this is. This is the definite integral from zero to 1,500, e to the power of negative x divided by two dx. That's two minus two divided by e to the power of 750, okay? I did another calculation. You guys wanna see my other calculation? Yeah, other calculation, okay. Other calculation I did. I went even closer, just kidding, I didn't, that was the last one. Sorry to get your hopes up, okay. Have you noticed a pattern here, okay? I feel like I've noticed a pattern. The pattern is there's always a two, right? There's always a two, yeah, always a two. And then there's a subtracting part right? Subtracting part. The subtracting part, what have you noticed is happening with the subtracting part each time? Uh, 
I wouldn't say half. I mean, you could say half. It's exponential. But we go from this to this, right? Okay. Oh, you're noticing that belt? That's really interesting. I noticed that. Yeah, 750 is half of 1500. Okay. So that's one pattern here. Actually, I hadn't thought of that. Thank you for mentioning it. I was looking at this relationship here. If you compare 2 divided by e to the 50th power and 2 divided by e to the 750th power, hmm. Do you know what e to the power of 750 is? It's a large number. Yeah, it's, we'll call it large. Um, I don't know what it is either. I'm going to approximate it, OK? Uh, that seems good. Let's put some of these on here. A few more of those. I like some of those. This one looks good. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. There. That seems good. Let's see here. What is that? Uh, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. It's past quadrillions. There's no name for a number that big, right? That's just not possible. No one bother name anything that big. There's nothing that big anyway. 5,218 quadrillion, okay? So here's what I want you to think about. Imagine you have 50 friends. Or I'm sorry, e to the 50 friends, which is also a very large number, okay? And you have one 12 inch pizza. You all split the pizza evenly. You're very hungry. How much of your hunger has been satisfied by your piece? I won't dignify that with a slice, by your piece of pizza. How much of your hunger has been satisfied? Zero, right? Zero of your hunger has been satisfied. Okay. Imagine instead of e to the 50th, you had e to the 750th friends. So that's 5,218 quadrillion. I mean, it's some made up number, right? It's super big. But let's see if that made friends. Okay. Same 12 inch pizza divided evenly. How much of your hunger has been satisfied? I, I mean, closer to zero, right? Zero angry. That's how full you are. I'm zero angry full. Thanks. Okay. Remember that not much pizza. Now the correct serving size for a 12 inch pizza is one. Okay. As with all pizza, whatever comes in the box is the serving size. So zero, right? So we have two minus a number getting closer and closer to zero. That's what we have. So have I convinced you that that integral is in fact two? Yeah, two, okay. Excellent, I have convinced you it is two. Let me convince you again differently. We'll do some calculus this time. I mean, we did a little bit of calculus, I won't lie. We'll do a little bit more. But first, let's make sure we have a good idea of what it means to be an unbounded area. And actually we call this an improper integral. So an improper integral is an unbounded region. And you can have different kinds of unbounded regions. So we've looked approaching infinity. You could also have an unbounded region because you have some kind of a discontinuity, like you've got a hole. Knowing how to work with improper integrals allows you to evaluate functions like that. So it allows us to get around the issue we have of applying the fundamental theorem of calculus to a function that is not continuous. Essentially what we're doing is breaking the thing up into something that is an interval we can work on. So let's talk about this one. Not going to do the intuitive, not going to do the calculation based. We're going to do it all at once. Nice proof, if you will. So. The definite integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative x divided by two dx is an improper integral. We have not a discontinuity, but we have an unbounded piece of this. The unbounded piece is the right endpoint. Ha ha, there isn't one. Infinity is real, but not real all at the same time. You could never find it, but it is real. Mm, metaphysical, 
Nice. So in order to work with this, with calculus, we need to take this improper integral and we need to transform it into a proper integral. And this is the crucial piece of mathematics that you must make sure that you show every single time you're going to evaluate an improper integral. Now, to bring it perhaps into a context more of you are into, on the AP exam, I have seen it scored some years on a free response question. If you do not include this thing right here, where you take your improper integral and transform it using the powers of math we all possess into a proper integral, you receive none points. <laughs> you get two divided by e to the power of 250 points. None, none points. So many points you get. So make sure that if you have an improper integral, you transform it first into a proper integral. Now, honestly, we just played math games, but think about the substitution we were doing when we're doing indefinite integrals and definite integrals. We were playing math games to take something that looked wrong and make it look right, right? We'd have some stuff to the one half power, by the powers of substitution, it would be u to the one half power. Like, oh, that's a power function. I can do that. We're kind of doing the same math games here with substitution. But what we're doing is we're saying, instead of infinity, we're going to have a number b. So b is a number. And we're going to say that we want the limit as b approaches infinity. So yes, we're playing math games again. So we want to evaluate this integral. So one thing I talked about notation-wise, you wanna make sure that you follow through on here is that you are always remembering to recopy your limit notation. This is something I missed on some of your papers for L'Hopital's rule. So antiderivative of e to the power of negative x divided by two is, Negative two e to the negative x divided by two? Hmm, is it? Question mark? Well, pretty easy to check. Is the derivative of negative two e to the power of negative x divided by two e to the power of negative x divided by two? Does the math check? Negative two times negative one half is one. Yep, it checks. If you would also like, you could think about this in terms of substitution. You could be negative x divided by two. Du is negative one half dx. So that means negative two du is dx, still works out. So we've got, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, which I can now apply because I have a defined left and right endpoint, Evaluating at b, that's negative 2e to the negative b divided by 2. Evaluating at 0, that's a negative 2e to the 0 divided by 2. I won't say negative 0 because I don't want to. And then you subtract them. Yes, that's how you do that integral thing with the calculus theorem thingy. Man, not using precise language sucks so much, and especially in math. Gets us into huge trouble. Oh, forgot a bracket. There you go. Those of you that were left hanging, I have fixed my bracket. Mm hmm I did say zero divided by two. So what do we got here? Well, we have two limits to consider. The first limit is as B approaches infinity of a negative two E to the negative B divided by two. So I gotta do that limit. And then I have this limit here, the limit as B approaches infinity of what's negative two times E to the zero divided by two. Don't tell me, I can figure it out. Got it, it's negative two. Yes, got it, mm -hmm. negative two. Sure, E to the zero is one, nailed it, nice. So I've got this limit minus negative two, which is the same thing as plus two. Okay, so question, as B approaches infinity,
What does two approach? That approaches two, yes? So in order to match up with the math we just did, what are we really hoping the negative two e to the b power of negative b divided by two is approaching? Is it approaching zero? Hard to say when it's a negative exponent. This, friends and neighbors, is why I would really, really like to encourage you when you're doing these to remember that negative exponents are harder to work with than positive exponents. So how about it? As b approaches infinity, is that approaching zero? Yes, yes it is. E to the power of b divided by two is getting larger and larger and larger. Say it's approaching, I don't know, 4,152 quadrillion. Biggest number ever. Biggest number. Yeah, like seriously, have you ever had a number in math class bigger than that before? Probably not. That's why calculus is the best. So this definitely approaches zero, right? And if you look at it, it's got kind of the same form as what we were looking at. Remember, we had a negative two e to the power of b divided by two. And our classmate over here said, hey, it's always half. Hey, nice one. So two, right? Two. OK, we have a fancy word for this situation. And the word that we use in this situation is we say that this is convergent. Convergent is a, uh, okay, for our purposes, we'll just call it fancy. You have a finite integral, we'd say that it is convergent. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It has to do with the limit existing and being two, but it's okay if you just say a finite integral is convergent. Okay, and yes, the contrast of this is when you have an infinite integral. In that case, we refer to something as divergent. Now, this is not an example of divergence. This is not an integral that diverges. They do exist, but what's really important here that I want you to think about before we transition to our next thing is we have a shape that is infinite in size. In, so a shape impossibly large, infinite, okay? Infinite, infinite. The area should be incalculable, right? Incalculable, can't do it, can't even say the word. It's two though. Let that contradiction settle into your brain an unbounded infinite area that is in fact of finite value. How is that for a paradox? 